Hi and welcome to WEH videos. My name is Skip and this is going to be our last video on the instruments on the 172 instrument panel and my friend Terry suggested that I should go ahead and do a video on the ADF automatic direction finder so here it is and we're going to look at three instruments today the automatic direction finder our heading indicator and the vertical speed indicator so let's get started with the automatic direction finder the automatic direction finder is a very simple instrument to use this is very old technology and x-plane doesn't support it really well there's only a few ndbs or non-directional beacons that you can actually tune to you have your receiver and you dial in the frequency you want. So I did find one frequency here, 371. Uh, let's take a look at the map. Unfortunately, the only transmitter, the only NDB I could find in this whole area, this is Benton Field up here, here's Reading KRDD, was way down here. And it's hard to see, but it it looks like a whole lot of little dots in a circle here and if you click on this you get the NDB frequency 371 kilohertz and this is basically a radio station you could tune to your favorite AM radio station and you can fly to it you will get that signal the radio will lock and you'll be able to listen to music that's one of the nice things about this but there are many drawbacks to this old antiquated system. So the automatic direction finder is very simple to use. You dial in the frequency you want and if you're within range of the transmitter this arrow will point directly to it and it's really that simple. So why do we have a compass rose here? Well that helps us determine what course we need to fly. So we are on a heading of roughly 150 on our heading indicator here. And so all we need to do is just dial that in on this compass rose, if I can get this over there. And now the needle points to the heading we need to fly to to get to that station. So what are we going to do? We're going to make a right turn to course 245 roughly. And we will be flying right towards that station and as we head towards that station the needle will come up to top center here and be pointing right to the station so let's give that a try let's make a right turn and we'll go to course two four five roughly and watch the needle now this compass rose isn't going to move that's just giving us an indication of where we need to go the course we need to fly so as we go to 245 notice the needle is coming up and it's gonna when we go to 245 we are going to be heading straight towards the station all right so what are some of the issues with the ADF we're gonna take a look at one here so I'm gonna have to fly this manually of course this is not autopilot and I'm going to make a little turn to the right to get that needle to come straight up. And once I get flying straight toward the station, I am going to try and maintain that. And here we go. All right, instead of just flying that and taking five or ten minutes for this flight to finish, let me just explain what happened. So I started right here and I set the course the needle pointing right at the station and I kept that needle pointing at the station and here is the flight path that I took and this is the problem we had a wind a 20 knot wind blowing from a 150 heading so it blew me off course so even though I had the needle pointing directly at the station I was not flying directly to the station so I end up making this big arc and then finally crossing the station. So with the ADF, you do not make a direct path and the weather has a huge, huge effect on you. 
The other problem with the ADF is you can get false signals bouncing off a mountain. So you may think you're flying straight to a station, but in fact it could be a bounced signal off a mountainside and you could fly right into the mountain if you were trying to do this under really poor conditions. So this is a very rough system. It gets you where you want to go, but you're going to do this under VFR rules to make sure that you can see where you're going. Now it's kind of fun to do this, but like I said, this is old technology. It's not supported really, really well on X-Plane. As I said earlier, I could not find any other places that had a NDB to uh, tune the radios to. So that's it for the ADF. A fun little thing to play with once in a while, but I don't think we're going to be using this regularly. So let's move on to the next instrument. All right, let's take a look at the heading indicator. And you're probably wondering, well, what's to look at? It's a compass and it tells us our heading. And that's true. However, this compass here, the heading indicator, can drift. Over time, it's not going to indicate the correct heading anymore. And occasionally, you need to compare it with your mechanical compass. If you're off, you have this little sync button here. And if you turn this, <clears throat> you can set it to the heading you have on your mechanical compass. The other thing is we have a little bug here. This is the heading bug. We can move this to a heading we want to fly. Let's just say we want to fly to the north and if we turn the autopilot on now we are going to fly to that heading automatically because now we have our autopilot engaged and we have the heading indication engaged and we will end up flying on the heading we select. And that's pretty darn simple and that's really all there is to the heading indicator. If it's out of sync with your mechanical compass then you want to sync it and if you want to use it for your autopilot you dial in a heading you want to go and select heading and you are set. So that's it for the heading indicator. Now you may be wondering, what are we going to discuss about the vertical speed indicator? It indicates vertical speed in 100 feet per minute increments. Pretty simple. What I want you to understand is this is a very sensitive instrument and some people get fixated on it and they're trying hard to keep a level flight and this little needle is bouncing all over the place and you're reacting to it. This is not an instrument to react to. It just helps you in certain circumstances. So where do you use this instrument then? Well, let's use it on landing. We're coming into Benton Field. We're downwind on runway 33. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some flaps on the downwind here. I'm going to set the RPM for 1,500. This is on the Cessna 172. And then I'm going to trim for 500 feet per minute. And guess what? This is going to give me 70 knots, a really nice speed for coming in for a landing. And now all I have to do is use the yoke a little bit. I don't have to mess with the throttle. And this is really simple. I'm not doing an awful lot of work to maintain my speed. And then I'm just going to come in for a basic landing. Now I'm not going to do the landing. When I make the turn for base, uh, the needle's going to jump all over the place. And that's what you don't want to get worried about, is this thing flying all over the place. Don't get fixated on it. It's just a little bit of a help here. And I'm not even close to making the turn for base yet, but you just get the idea. So now when we're coming in on final, you're going to be around 250 feet per minute, and that's all you really need to know. I haven't touched anything, so this works really, really well. That's a good use for your vertical speed indicator. My whole point is, don't try and chase this needle. It'll just frustrate you. It's a good tool, but you don't want to get all fixated on it. So that's it for my little video on the Automatic Direction Finder, ADF, the Heading Indicator, and the Vertical Speed Indicator. The automatic direction finder, uh, not a lot of use for it. In X-Plane, there's only a few 
radio stations that you can tune into. Remember for your heading indicator to sync it with your compass occasionally if you're on a long flight. And you have your heading bug that you control with this little knob here. And the thing about the vertical speed is you don't want to let it get you excited when it's moving all over the place. It's a very sensitive instrument. It's a great tool, but don't let it get you reacting too quickly. Look at your other instruments first. So that's it. And thank you so much for watching. If you like this, please click the like button. If you would like to leave a comment or send me a message, that would be great. I do reply to all my comments. So thank you again for watching, and God bless.